Thank you, Senator Manchin. Senator Graham. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Admiral Mullen, when you look back on your time in the Pentagon, I hope you feel very satisfied because it's been a tough tour of duty. Yeah, sir. You have had a lot, of, and we haven't always agreed, but there's been a lot of social change in the military. There's been a lot of change in the world, and uh, you have been consistent. You have told us what you think, what you think is best for the country, for the military, and that's the best anybody could do. So I am very proud of your service, and uh, I, I will consider you a friend. Thank you. To my good friend from West Virginia, I couldn't disagree with you more. <laughs> Let me tell you that if you don't see things different in Iraq, you just haven't been lately. And to those Iraqis who have fought and died, God bless you. Al-Qaeda is the biggest loser in Iraq. Would you agree with that, Secretary Panetta? Absolutely. They came to Anbar, and they tried to take over, and the Iraqi people said, no, thank you. And with our help, Al-Qaeda was delivered a punishing blow in Iraq. Do you agree with that? Yes. Now, you're the guy that said, we need to go into Pakistan and get bin Laden. God bless you. That was a hard decision by the president, <clears throat> and he took your advice, and he made a calculated risk. Well done, Mr. President. Going in on the ground was the most risky option, but the highest payoff, and well done. To be secure, don't we have to do more than just kill terrorists in the war on terror? That's right. All right, so here's my construct. It's great to kill bin Laden because that deters other people from wanting to be bin Laden if they can be deterred. But the best thing I think we could do as a nation, Admiral Mullen, is to provide will, capacity to will. If there's a country out there who says, you know, I see al-Qaeda just like you do, and I don't like the Taliban any more than you do, I'm willing to fight them with your help. Isn't it in our national security interest to help them? I, yes, sir, in terms of certainly the counterterrorism. There'll be 352,000 Afghans under arms by the end of the year. Is that correct? That's correct. And our job... By the end of next year. Excuse me, by the end of next year. So that makes me feel good as a, an American knowing that those 352,000 will take the fight to the Taliban because <clears throat> talk about infrastructure crumbling here at home. The World Trade Center crumbled. And that infrastructure crumbled because of a place called Afghanistan provided sanctuary to al-Qaeda and they executed the whole attack for less than a million dollars. Do you agree with me, Secretary Panetta, that if things continue to go like they're going in Afghanistan, the likelihood of Afghanistan ever becoming a safe haven for terrorists to attack this country is very remote. That's correct. The whole, the whole point is to, for them to achieve sufficient stability so that never happens again. And simply put, isn't it better to fight them in their backyard with the help of people who live in their backyard than having to do it all from home? Yes. All right. So those who've served in Afghanistan and Iraq, you are changing the world. And it is costly. It takes more time. It's more labor-intensive to build will to ca capacity to will than it is to kill a single individual. Drone attacks are part of a strategy, but the ultimate blow to this ideological movement called the War on Terror is to have the good people over there fight back and win. And you know what? They want to fight back. With our help, they'll win. So that's my two cents worth. Back here at home, uh, you're trying, Secretary Panetta, to go through the defense budget and over the next decade take out a substantial amount of money because we're broke as a nation, right? That's what they, it's painful. That's what they tell it? me. It's painful. <laughs> it we is. Bet. You it do is. it with a smile on your face, but you got to. And I want to help because the defense budget should be on the table. Nothing is sacrosanct. The senator from West Virginia is right. We're broke, but you don't become wealthy by allowing your enemies to grow in strength and come back and get you the second time. So we're going to put the defense budget under scrutiny. And where there's $400 billion, $350 billion, $450 billion, it's going to be substantial over the next decade. Triggers in the debt ceiling bill, are you familiar with them? Yes. As I understand this legislation, if this super committee can't find the $1.4 trillion they're charged with finding in terms of savings over the next decade, there will be a trigger pulled to achieve that savings. And $600 billion will come out of the Defense Department. Is that correct? Roughly in that area. That's On right. top of what you're trying to do. That's right. If we pull that trigger, would we be shooting ourselves in the foot? We'd be shooting ourselves in the head. <laughs> That's why I like it. <laughs> 
It would be the dumbest thing. Do you know why Congress would do such a dumb thing? Uh, you don't have to answer that. <laughs> uh, I don't know either. That's the dumbest construct in the entire world to try to find $600 billion in savings is to put the Defense Department at risk, destroy the finest military in the history of the world. And I am disappointed in my Republican Party for allowing that to be part of the puzzle. Now, let's go to uh, Iraq. You're not going to tell me the number. I understand why you're not going to tell me the number. But we're going to talk about Iraq in terms of our strategic interest. On a scale of 1 to 10, how important is it that Iraq end well in terms of our national security interest? <laughs> it's, it's certainly uh, 8 and above. Okay. So let's look at it in terms of eight and above. The resourcing for a eight and above situation should be robust, but reasonable. When General Odenero says that we don't want a too large a force, I agree. The Iraqis want to take over, but they need our help. If you looked at the Kurdish-Arab dispute as a potential failure point in the future of Iraq, where fighting could break out, Admiral Mullen, how would you rate that as a risk? All right. Okay, if you look at the construct that you've come up with where you have a Peshmerga, Afghan security force, and American soldier forming a new brigade or company, that construct is paying dividends, isn't it? Yes, sir, it has. They call it the Lions Brigade. So what I would ask you to do when you sit down and look at the number of troops, to make sure that that fault line does not crack, because we've got a plan to integrate the Peshmerga, the Afghan, yeah. uh, Iraqi security forces, and we're the referee. Over time, we're going to build uh, a transition force that will be more stable. You said something, capacity and capabilities in port is numbers. I agree with that, but there's a time in military engagements where numbers yeah, do matter. Sure. We're at the point now where capability matters. So my point about 3,000, and I know that's not the number, intelligence gathering, what ability do the Iraqis have to gather intelligence uh, on their own compared to us? Oh, I, I, I would describe that as one of the gap areas that you know, they clearly need to work on. It's not none, but it's an area that they certainly But they don't have close to what we have, and if you want to keep Iran at bay, the more we know about what Iran's doing, the better off the Iraqis are. Is Sir, but correct? Senator Graham, I don't think we should make them us either. I mean, they, they, yes, they need to improve, but it's not... But we have a national security interest still in Iraq, I, right? I, so I, it's in our national security interest to know what's going on inside that country. So when you look at the fault line of the, the curb air, air dispute, you look at intelligence gathering capabilities they don't have, uh, when you look at training their Air Force, training their Army, and having a force protection plan for our diplomats, the numbers begin to add up. And all I'm saying is that would you feel comfortable with a member of your family serving in a follow-on force of 3,000? I would, I have confidence that whatever, if the, assuming there is a number, that force protection will be, uh, will be, that our force protection will meet okay. the needs of whoever might be there. One last So in question. that regard, yes. Okay, one last question. I know my time's expired. Secretary Panetta, we've come up in the foreign operations uh, Mark up with some conditions and benchmarks on Pakistan. I want to provide it to you, and you, would you write me a letter and see if you think we're on the right track? Sure. Simply put, you have informed the Pakistanis enough is enough. I believe we can't trust them or abandon them. Do you agree with that simple statement? That's where we are. You can't trust them, but you can't abandon them. But would you agree with me if something doesn't change in Pakistan substantially, that we're on a collision course? With Pakistan, it has to change. Uh, we can't. We can't continue uh, the situation that's there now. Thank you both for your service.